Hello everyone, this is John Hashmat and welcome to Physics Simply. In this video, I will be solving the paper 2 exam for May June 2022, variant 3. So let's get started. Question 1 says, what is a micrometer screw gauge used to measure? Uh, is it for very small uh, currents or small distances or small forces or small pressures? This is small distances. Uh, it does not uh, measure current forces or pressure. Question 2 says, a man stands next to a railway track. Uh, a train traveling at 40 meters per second takes 2 seconds to pass the man. So we have speed and we have time. And we need the length of the train, which is distance. So we can use distance equals speed multiplied by time. So we multiply 40 by 2. That gives 80 meters. Question 3 says, a skydiver jumps from an airplane and falls toward the earth. Which statement is correct when the skydiver has reached terminal velocity? Uh, the skydiver speed is decreasing. No. The skydiver speed is increasing. No. The skydiver is moving with constant speed. Yes, that is the meaning of terminal velocity. So the answer is C. Question 4 says, on the moon all objects fall with the same acceleration. Which statement explains this? On the moon all objects have the same weight. That's not correct. The moon has a smaller gravitation field strength than the earth. Yes, but it does not explain why all objects fall uh, with the same acceleration. Uh, the weight of an object is directly proportional to its mass. Yes, because weight is equal to mg and g is the gravitational acceleration and the gravitation field strength. So uh, g must be constant So uh, for the weight and mass to be proportional. So all objects have the same g and all objects have the same acceleration so the answer is c question 5 says a measuring cylinder contains 30 centimeter cubed of a liquid some more of the liquid is added until the liquid level reaches 50 centimeter cubed mark uh, the reading on the balance increases by 30 grams so the increase in mass was 30 and the increase in volume was from 30 to 50 that's 20 centimeter cubed and density equals mass over volume, so we divide 30 by 20. This gives an answer of 1.5 grams per centimeter cubed for density of the liquid. Question 6 says, a box of mass 4 kilograms is pulled along a horizontal floor in a straight line by a constant force F. Uh, the constant frictional force acting on the box is 2 newtons. The speed of the box increases from 0.5 meter per second to 2.5 meter per second in 2 seconds. So we have an object. Uh, of mass 4 kilograms, uh, there is a forward force F and there is a resisting force of 2 newtons. So we, to, in order to calculate F, we can use the equation F equals MA. But here the resultant force is not F alone, it's F minus 2. The resultant force is uh, force with motion minus force against motion. This is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. And the acceleration can be calculated by V minus U over T. So substituting uh, with these numbers, F minus 2 is equal to 4 multiplied by 2.5 minus 0 0.5 over 2. So we have 2 over 2, that's 1. So gives 4, then we move the 2 to the other side by addition. 4 plus 2 is equal to 6 newtons. So the answer is C. Question 7 says, a beam is pivoted at one end as shown. The beam weighs 6 newton and its weight acts at a point x 40 centimeters from the pivot. A force of 4 newton is applied to the beam, causing it to balance horizontally. So uh, the 6 newton load uh, is causing a clockwise moment. So we need an upward force to counteract this clockwise moment by creating an anti-clockwise moment. So it must be upwards. The force must be upwards. So A and B are eliminated and we can calculate the distance from the pivot using the equation of uh, the principle of moments. Clockwise moments equal to anti-clockwise moments. So 6 multiplied by 40 is equal to 4 multiplied by the distance from the pivot. So the distance would be uh, 6 times 40 over 4 which is equal to 60 centimeters from the pivot not from X. So we need either 20 centimeters to the left of x or 20 centimeters to the right of x. It's 60 centimeters. This means 20 centimeters is okay, but it is to the right of x, not to the left. So the answer is D. Question 8 says two vectors wx and wz are shown 
what is the resultant of the vectors so the resultant is the diagonal of the uh, parallelogram in the same direction as the original forces so it is wy so the answer is a question 9 says which equation for impulse is correct is impulse equal to force multiplied by time so the first one is the correct answer so the answer is a question 10 says a ball of mass 0.16 kilograms is moving forwards at a speed of 0.50 meters per second a second ball of mass 0.10 kilograms is stationary the first ball strikes the second ball the second ball moves forward at a speed of 0.50 meters per second so using the equation m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equals m1 v1 plus m2 v2 and taking the first mass to be m1 the second mass to be m2 these are the initial velocities u1 and u2 is equal to zero since it was stationary uh, this is v2 because it is uh, of the object of mass 2 0.10 kilograms and then we substitute by the numbers here we have 0.16 multiplied by 0.50 plus 0 the momentum of a stationary object is 0 equals 2 m1 still 0.16 multiplied by v1 the required speed uh, plus m2 0.10 multiplied by the final velocity of object 2 0.50 so we move this bracket to the other side by subtraction then we divide by 0.16 this gives an answer of 0.1875 which we can approximate to 0.19 so the answer is b question 11 says in which form is energy stored by stretching a spring uh, stretching means deformation so it is the elastic potential energy so the answer is b Question 12 says a car moves along a horizontal road. Its initial kinetic energy is 280,000 joules for kilojoules. A constant resistive force of 200 newton acts on the car. No other horizontal forces act on the car. What is the kinetic energy of the car after it has traveled a distance of 300 meters? So we can use uh, the equation work equals to the change in energy, in this case kinetic energy. So work equals force multiplied by distance so we multiply 200 by 300 that gives an answer of 60,000 joules so the kinetic energy decreases by 60,000 joules we subtract 60,000 from 280,000 that gives an answer of 220,000 joules so 220 kilojoules making the answer C Question 13 says the diagram shows a deep reservoir formed by a dam. On what does the pressure at X depend? Pressure in a liquid is equal to rho GH. So density of the liquid, gravitational field strength and the depth. So the depth of the water at X, yes. The length of the reservoir, no. Surface area, no. Thickness of the dam wall, no. Question 14 says the diagram shows gas particles hitting the wall of a container. The system is at room temperature. Why do the gas particles exert a pressure on the wall? Uh, when the particles hit the wall, their momentum changes. That's correct. Which causes a force that is also correct. So force divided by area causes pressure. So uh, the answer is A. Reading the other choices, when the particles hit the wall, their average kinetic energy increases. That does not happen since uh, they move with the same speed. The particles expand. No, the particles do not expand. The particles collide with each other. That does not cause a pressure on the wall. So the answer is A. Question 15 says a gas in a container is cooled, but uh, the volume of the gas does not change. Which row describes the changes in the pressure of the gas and the kinetic energy of the gas? So the pressure due to cooling decreases and the kinetic energy also decreases since speed decreases. So the answer is A. Question 16 says the iron cylinder of an engine is to be fitted into a piece of aluminium. The outside diameter M of the iron cylinder is slightly larger than the diameter N of the hole in the aluminium. What is the best action to fit the cylinder into the aluminium? We need to decrease the size of the iron cylinder and increase the size of the aluminium. So we need to contract this one and expand this one. So this is cooling and this is heating. So cool the aluminium and cool the iron 
No. Uh, cool the aluminium and heat the iron. No. Heat the aluminium and cool the iron. Yes. So the answer is C. Question 17 says four metal blocks at temperature of 200 degrees Celsius are left to cool down to the same temperature. So same change in temperature. Uh, the table gives the mass of each block and the energy it transfers to the surroundings as it cools. Which two blocks are made of the same metal? Same metal means same specific heat capacity. So using the equation Q equals MC delta theta. Uh, for C to be a subject of formula, it would be equal to Q over M delta theta. And delta theta is the same for all objects in this question. So we need to calculate the ratio of energy to mass. They should be all the same. So we divide uh, the right hand column divided by uh, the left hand column. So dividing the first one that gives an answer of 162. The next one is 108. The next one is 162. So uh, 3 and 1 are the same. Uh, the last one gives an answer of 40.5. So it is 1 and 3 that have the same specific heat capacity. So they are made of the same metal. And the answer is B. Question 18 says a glass contains an ice drink uh, on a warm and humid day. Water starts to form on the outside of the glass. What is the name of the effect by which water forms? So this is from water vapor to liquid water. This is condensation. Question 19 says one end of a copper bar is heated to a high temperature. Which mechanism is responsible for the transfer of thermal energy to the other end of the copper bar? So this is a metal. It depends on the lattice vibration of the uh, copper molecules or atoms. Uh, and it also depends on energy that the electrons uh, transfer when moving along the bar. So it's uh, less vibrations and electrons. C says a movement of high energy copper ions along the bar. So ions do not move in, uh, in solids. D says a movement of high energy electrons along the bar only, not only. It also includes the lattice vibrations. So the answer is B. Question 20 says an object emits infrared radiation. Which two properties of the object determine the rate of radiation of thermal energy from the object? So the rate of heat radiation depends on the surface color, the surface area, and the temperature of the surface. So it's not density. It is not mass. It's surface area and the surface temperature of the object. So the answer is D. Question 21 says the diagram shows a wave. Uh, this is displacement distance graph. Which row is correct? Amplitude and wavelength. So amplitude is from the undisturbed position to a peak uh, crest or trough. So this is 1. So the amplitude is 1. And the wavelength is between two corresponding points or two identical points like these, uh, which makes the wavelength 8. So the answer is B. Question 22 says the wavelength of a beam of X-rays traveling through air is 5.4 times cells per negative 10 meters. What is the frequency of the X-rays? So frequency is equal to speed divided by wavelength. The speed of electromagnetic waves uh, in air is 3 times 10 to the power of 8. You should know that divided by the wavelength 5.4 times 10 to the power of negative 10. That gives an answer of 5.5 recurring times 10 to the power of 17. So it's approximately 5.6 times 10 to the power of 17. So the answer is C. Question 23 says, a ray of light passes from air through a sheet of glass and out uh, the other side as shown. Uh, which two angles are equal to each other? So uh, if we draw normals at the boundaries, we have uh, this is the incidence uh, angle at the boundary 1. And this is the refraction angle at boundary 1. We have here the small angle here is incident at boundary 2 and this is refraction at boundary 2. So either these two angles are equal or these two angles are equal. So uh, we have options angle of incidence at boundary 1 and angle of incidence at boundary 2. No angle of refraction at boundary 2. Uh, angle of incidence at boundary 1 and angle of refraction at boundary 1. No at boundary 2. Angle of incidence at boundary 1 and angle of refraction at boundary 2. Yes, that is the correct answer. Question 24 says, a plane mirror is fixed to a vertical wall. A boy looks at the image of himself in a mirror. Which statement describes the image formed? 
real it's not real uh, the image in a plane mirror is always uh, always virtual and it is upright so the answer is c question 25 says the speed of light in air is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second the critical angle for light in a transparent plastic material placed in air is 37 degrees what is the speed of light in the plastic material so we have two equations uh, that include refractive index refractive index is equal to the speed in air over the speed in the other medium so here it's plastic and is also equal to 1 over sine the critical angle so we can use these two equations or these two parts of the equation to calculate what we need so we have the speed in air 3 times 10 to the power of 8 and the speed in the plastic that's required in the question is equal to 1 over sine 37 so we can use cross multiplication we multiply 3 times 10 to the power of 8 by sine 37 divided by 1 that gives an answer for the speed 1.8054 times 10 to the power of 8. So we can approximate it to 1.8 times 10 to the power of 8. So the answer is A. Question 26 says a resistor and a battery are connected in series. The value of the resistor is 20 ohms and the potential difference of the battery is 4 volts. What is the current in the resistor? The current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So we divide 4 by 20. That gives an answer of 0.20 amperes. Question 27 says, which statement correctly compares radio waves and X-rays? Radio waves have longer wavelength, that's correct. And they have the same speed, not greater speed. So the answer is B. Question 28 says, a student attempts to make a permanent magnet by hammering metal bars of the same size in the same magnetic field. In which case is the strongest permanent magnet produced? So if the bar is parallel to the field or perpendicular to the field, it's better if it's parallel to the field, so it's not B nor D. And if it is a permanent magnet, it should not be made of iron, it should be made of steel, which is a hard magnetic material. So the answer is C. Question 29 says, a metal sphere R is suspended on an insulating thread. Another sphere S is brought close to sphere R. Sphere S has a negative charge and is attached to a plastic stand. The diagram shows the spheres when they are close to each other. They attract each other. Which charged state of R uh, accounts for the behavior in the diagram? So uh, attraction can happen if they are oppositely charged. So positive charge is a viable option. And it can also happen when the uh, when one is charged and one is uncharged. Since R is a metal, uh, the negative charge on S would repel the negative charge on R, leaving the other side positively charged uh, at a closer distance to the sphere. So the attraction would be greater than the repulsion causing the sphere to attract. So it is not positive only, it positive or uncharged. So the answer is D. Question 30 says, a student compares the wavelength and uses of infrared waves uh, with microwaves. Which row is correct? Wavelength of infrared compared to microwaves. Uh, infrared has a shorter wavelength than microwaves. And the uses for infrared, it is uh, for intruder alarms. Since it's uh, heat radiation, uh, the alarm can detect the heat emitted by a person. It is not used in satellite television. This is actually for microwaves not infrared so the answer is c question 31 says there is a current i in a resistor for a time t the potential difference uh, across the resistor is v a student calculates the product of i v t that is the equation for energy so it is not uh, it does not have unit ampere nor coulomb nor what it is the joule which is the unit for energy Question 32 says, which statement about identical lamps in parallel is not correct? So identical lamps and in parallel. If one lamp blows, the other remain switched on. Yes, in parallel, all uh, branches work independently. The current in each lamp is different. No, since they are identical lamps. So this is the one that is not correct. The lamps can be switched on and off separately. Yes, independently. The lamps have the same voltage across each of them. Yes, because they are in parallel so the answer is b question 33 says the four circuits shown each contain four diodes 
in which circuit is the direction of the current in the resistor always from the red terminal to the black terminal so this is a full wave rectifier in a full wave rectifier all diodes that are opposite to each other must be pointing in the same direction so this is a possible answer a is a possible answer b is also a possible answer since uh, the opposite diodes are pointing in the same direction uh, here it's not working and here it is not working so it's uh, not c or d and we need the current to be moving from the red terminal to the black terminal so it must be moving down from here these two diodes can allow current to flow to that point and then the current goes to the red terminal so it is a uh, in b we need the current to go in the same direction but these diodes are pointing in the opposite direction so the current is not allowed to reach this point so it's not b question 34 is about logic gates so you can skip this for uh, the new syllabus it says the truth table for a logic gate is shown we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 all give 1s except for 1 and 1 gives a, a 0 output. This is the opposite of an AND gate. So this is an AND gate. So the answer is B. Question 35 says a wire XY is connected to a resistor or the wire is moved in the magnetic field between two magnet poles. Uh, in which direction must the wire be moved so the induced current, this is electromagnetic induction, is in the direction shown uh, this direction shows the wire carrying a current into the page between the poles so we have a magnetic field to the left and current into the page using the right hand rule to find the direction of motion pointing the index finger uh, of the right hand with the magnetic field from north to south and the middle finger into the page you will find that the thumb is pointing towards the bottom of the page so the answer is b question 36 says which transformer can change 240 volts ac into 15 volts ac we can use the equation vp over vs is equal to np over ns so vp over vs is 240 divided by 15 this gives an answer of 16 and we divide the number of turns here we have 800 over 40 this gives an answer of 20 b we divide 1000 turns over 25 that gives 40 in c we divide 2400 by 15 turns that gives an answer of 160 and the last one is 1200 divided by 75 that gives 16 same as vp over vs so the answer is d Question 37 says the circuit shown consists of a vertical wire, a resistor R and a battery. The magnetic field near the wire is also shown in this diagram. Two changes are made to the circuit. The polarity of the battery is reversed. Uh, the resistor R is replaced with another with lower resistance than R. So this increases the current. What effect will these changes have on the magnetic field near the wire? So the direction of the magnetic field will reverse when the current is reversed. So the direction will be opposite. And the strength of the magnetic field depends on the current. Since the current increased, this will cause the magnetic field to be stronger. So the answer is C. Question 38 says carbon 14 has a proton number Z of 6 and a nuclear number A of 14. So it's carbon 6 and 14 this way nitrogen 14 has a proton number of 7 and a nuclear number of 14 so it's n 14 at the top and 7 at the bottom carbon 14 emits beta particle to form nitrogen 14 so starting with carbon 14 at the top not at the bottom so it's not b and not d forming nitrogen 14 at the top not at the bottom and the beta particle is zero at the top and negative one at the bottom so it's not a so the answer is c question 39 says a beam of radiation containing alpha particles beta particles and gamma rays passes between two parallel plates one plate is positively charged and the other is negatively charged which radioactive emission will be attracted towards the positively charged plate it would be the negatively charged emission which is the beta particle only 
Question 40 says a scientist uses a counter to measure the radioactivity of a sample of nitrogen 13. The counter and sample of nitrogen 13 are on the table in a laboratory. The reading on the counter is recorded for a period of 80 minutes and the graph is drawn using the measurements. So first we check the graph if there is a background or not. If the graph keeps uh, falling or decreasing, there is no background. But since it became horizontal at this level, this is the level of background. So here we have background of 30. What is the best estimate of the half-life of the sample of nitrogen 13? We take the first value, which is 330. We remove the background from that value. That gives us 300. This is the first step. The second step is divided the 300 by 2. That gives a 150 uh, answer. Then to move back to the graph to get the time from the x-axis, we need to add the background again since all values on the graph include background. So the last step is adding 30 to 150. That gives 180. Going from 180, we see the time here on the x-axis. It's 10 minutes. So the answer is A. This was the end of this exam. I hope you found this video useful. I wish you all the best in your exams and I will see you in another video.